All right, everybody, good afternoon. Welcome back. We've still got a little more Nelson Cesar related work to do. And now we're going to take a look at some of the tape and see what we can see when you're watching him over the course of a full game. So I decided to take his week one game from last year against UTSA, University of Texas San Antonio, and basically just watch every defensive snap and see what I could get a sense of with regards to Nelson Cesar. Uh, once again, for anybody who missed the previous videos, I'm not putting clips on the screen because YouTube has typically not allowed me to do so. Last time I tried to do it, they just didn't let me show the video at all. And I don't feel like putting a lot of work into a video that nobody's going to be able to watch. So, this, I mean, this is fine. I think most people are able to get the gist of what I'm trying to say through these videos. Okay, so... From UTSA, now UTSA, not really the best competition. Um, they're a team that is, I think, typically even considered beneath that of the Houston Cougars in terms of talent and ability. But um, it was a game where I thought Nelson Cesar was considered to have played very well. And after watching it, I was mostly pretty happy with what I saw. So going through this game from start to uh, finish... Very first snaps, um, actually, this is something that happens quite a bit throughout this game. He's moving around pre-snap, and those plays where he ends up as a box linebacker are mostly just like he just ends up there. He just kind of ends up inside and plays like a stack linebacker. Now, when he ends up as a stack linebacker, he's usually blitzing, so it's not like he's actually playing the role of a stack. He's usually very aggressively trying to push into the backfield as if he's on the edge, but I do think that um, you you see where that versatility, quote-unquote, comes from. Um, initial impression is that he does have a tendency to get stuck on blocks. Early in this game, I thought he was getting stuck on blockers quite a bit. I thought that they were really doing a good job holding him up, and there wasn't really a lot that he was doing. Um, shows a little hesitancy to aggressively attack the backfield on a run play early on as well. I did take a little bit of a note on that. But I did see the motor. I was impressed with his motor to keep going through contact. He got a pressure on a play in the first quarter where he was initially stymied, but he was able to get off the blocker on his second effort and go get a pressure on the quarterback. And effort is one of his big calling cards, so it's good to see that. That's going to be something that he's going to lean on heavily if he wants to make it in the NFL because he doesn't have the elite talent of a blue-chip edge prospect. Um, his sack that he got on third down early in this game was really impressive. He just knocked over a much bigger tackle. He just speed to powered him right down into the ground. I was really actually impressed with that. It was clearly a bigger guy, probably a stronger guy, and he just long armed him. And that's the kind of stuff that I feel like he might be able to do in the NFL. He just rushes right through the chest of a bigger offensive tackle, is able to get his arms into his chest, pushes him back, and then goes over him and just gets the sack. It's a great play. Very impressive play. It's the kind of thing that makes you think he might have some ability to play in the NFL at the minimum. So that was something that really sold me on his abilities. Um, on the third drive of the game, he played like maybe the last two plays on a long drive and UTSA scored a touchdown. So he got an extended break and UTSA immediately scores. Um, there are some reps in this game where he's lining up in the slot. Like at the end of the first quarter, he lined up in the slot on a rep and they're in this particular game. They didn't really throw his way. They didn't even throw to his side of the field. There was a screen to the other side on this particular play. So I didn't get a great sense for his coverage abilities, but I could watch every game he ever played and I still wouldn't get a good sense of his coverage abilities because he got targeted like nine times in his career. So there's not much to work with. Um, impressed with his ability to quickly get the outside shoulder of a tackle. It seems like as this game goes on, he's not getting stuck on blockers anymore, and he's routinely just able to kind of use his lateral agility to get the outside corner on the tackle and get around him and at least generate some kind of disruption in the backfield. It, he's almost slippery in a way. It, it's just hard to square up a good block on him on some of these plays, and it's something that I'm noticing over and over again. Um, there's a third and eight where he's able to use his first step quickness to just get right past his man. And on these plays, he looks like a potential really good edge rusher in the NFL. Like he has genuine first step quickness to get around his guy. He draws a holding penalty to save, uh, the quarterback on that play, which kills the drive. It was a third and eight where they actually picked up the first down, but 
He drew the holding penalty, so it came back. Third and 18, they ran a give-up play and punted. So it ended up being a pretty big play in this game because it ended up being relatively close. So every little thing that happened mattered. So I'm starting to see his ability to routinely get in the backfield, routinely get to the quarterback, routinely make things happen in the backfield. Uh, more pre-snap movement sees him lining up in the slot, and then he comes down at the last second to rush the quarterback. So you're seeing the versatility from him. But what I would say is that for the most part, when he's showcasing that versatility, when he's showcasing that ability to line up in the slot, line up as a linebacker, line up all over the place, he's mostly just using it as a pretext to blitz. So I think that to say that it's going to translate to the NFL is probably reaching. I don't know if I see him being able to do all that. But pretty good regardless. Pretty uh, pretty impressive the way he's able to, at the very least, mix up where he's lining up and still get it done. Shows a real ability to bounce off the tackle and then get around him. Like he'll engage with him and then he sheds him and gets around him. And it's something that happens repeatedly. And he's just a little bit quicker than the tackle most of the time. And he's able to get around him a lot. There was one really nice rep against the run where he worked through two different blockers to tackle. He shed the first guy, shed the second guy, and then he's able to get the tackle like two yards down the field or something. It was a really nice play. It indicated that he does have potential as a run defender, that he does have an understanding of how to work through traffic. It's just a matter of the cerebral element of run defense. Can he diagnose a run play and get to the right spot against it? Uh, makes a tackle for a two-yard gain on a run up the middle, was able to actually get outside his tackle and then cut back inside so quickly he was able to get to the back trying to go up the gut and stop it for a minimal gain. So you're seeing that outside ability translate to an ability to even get all the way back inside when he gets the outside corner. Um, there's a wildcat snap in this game as uh, it goes on. At one point, they, uh, UTSA ran a wildcat snap. And he sheds the pulling lineman and actually makes the play at the line of scrimmage. It's a really impressive play. You're seeing the stack and shed ability. You're seeing the strength. These are the reasons why he might end up being a pretty good run defender in the NFL, even though there are things that are lacking on that element for him right now. So I like what I'm seeing in terms of potential. It's just a matter of is he going to be able to get all the way there over, uh, over his NFL career with these cerebral elements. Well-designed blitz sees him occupy the tackle while the blitzing linebacker sacks the quarterback. Just a pretty standard play where they send two guys at one blocker. Uh, Caesar gets blocked and the linebacker gets in and sacks the quarterback. Even when he's blocked squarely, even when they're able to lay a good block on him, he's able to generate knockback on the tackle and push him back into the pocket to affect the play at least somewhat. I don't want to say like he's having a massive impact on the play, but he is generating genuine knockback on um, on tackles, and that is causing the play to have to go maybe a little bit quicker than they wanted. Makes a nice inside move to get the tackle to fall, fall over and force the guard to come over and help, which frees up another rusher to go pressure the quarterback and force a broken play. So we're seeing a little bit of an inside move now, and it's obviously not the smoothest inside move you've ever seen, but it works well in the context of a game against UTSA, and the tackle just straight fell over trying to stick with him. So you're seeing some of that advanced pass rush ability that he has been picking up over the last um, last couple of years playing for the Cougars. Uh, swims through guard, lining up inside to make play on running back on a run play. So that was another play where he ended up inside. And there was an earlier play where he ended up in a similar situation and got pancaked, basically. So this was nice to see. He swims through him and manages to get to the running back and help make the play on him. He got several reps off near the start of the third quarter, not on the field. In fact, he was on the field a lot less in the second quarter half, I'm sorry, second half in general, I felt like. Um, on the handful of plays that I did see him in the second half, he had some more zone spot drops back into coverage, and he wasn't ever really looked at. Um, they just didn't throw his way when he did drop back, so I didn't really feel like I learned that much from it. Uh, creates pressure and flushes the quarterback out by getting outside edge with speed. So, again, he's causing things to happen with his well-rounded suite of abilities. He doesn't have elite speed or elite strength, but he's pretty good in both areas, and that's showing up well in this game. 
On a fourth and ten, where Houston's trying to put the game away, he lines up inside and is quarterback spying, but he gets beat to the outside. So not a great rep. He did have um he he did have an assignment to keep the quarterback contained and he couldn't do it. And the quarterback ended up scrambling for a first down, which was something that kept the game alive, barely. But it did keep the game alive, so that did not look so great. I think he got caught inside a little bit. Um, a few plays later, he lines up inside again, and he comes on a blitz. That seems to be what happens on most of his inside reps. He ends up blitzing. And on this play, um, uh, he blitzes, and T UTSA would score a touchdown. And that would be their last offensive play of the game. They would not get the ball back, and Houston would win this game. So, mostly good stuff here. I liked a lot of what I saw. There is some stuff that lets you know why this guy was not a highly coveted prospect, but I'm going to say it again. I suspect that this guy could have been a highly touted, maybe top 100 guy next year if he had come back, and he didn't. He probably could have filed paperwork for it because he only played like 20 total snaps his first two years combined, but he's here now, and I actually think there's a chance that he could develop into something NFL caliber. I kind of like what I see here. All right. So that's it for the tape on Nelson Cesar. I have one more rookie I'm going to do tomorrow, and then we're going to go ahead and call it good and say we've said everything we need to say about this rookie class. And um, if somebody else emerges as like a genuine sleeper to make this roster or make the practice squad and have a pathway to actual playing time, I'll probably talk about them at that time. But for now, we're going to call it good. Let me know what you think of Nelson Cesar. I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks.